The Ruth Patrick Award honors scientists who have applied the aquatic sciences towards solving critical environmental problems. The 2022 Ruth Patrick Award is presented to Dr. Nenembari Zabi, Professor of Hydrobi Hydrobiology in the Department of Fisheries at the University of Port Harcourt for research and engagement with a critical impact on the recovery of the Niger Delta ecosystem from oil spills and environmental justice for affected communities. Dr. Zabi serves as the coordinator for the Center for Environment, Human Rights, and Development, a leading human rights and environmental non-governmental organization in Nigeria. In 2008 and 2009, residents of a coastal community in the Niger Delta were seriously impacted by two major oil spills. Through his studies, Dr. Zabi provided valuable baseline data and facilitated the world's largest mangrove cleanup and remediation project. These actions greatly aided the recovery effort for the population of people that depend on the impacted creek for their livelihood. Moreover, Dr. Zabi's work was critical in resolving a landmark litigation case with Shell on the consequences of oil spills on the livelihood of people who depend on Voto Creek. Please help me in welcoming and congratulating Dr. Zabi um, on this award. Oh, you're not Martin Award, no? Where, where's your presentation? You kept it. Wow, thank you, Amina, for the wonderful introduction. Um, and let me state that 17 years ago, when I started to research um, the ecology of the Boulder Creek till now, I never anticipated any recognition, local or global. So I am very grateful to Aslo for this great honor bestowed on me um, I want to also thank um, Dr. Dimele Emeka, who nominated me, uh, Gov. Tav Oisin, um, Ibisi Meyatela, and Dan Lida, that provided letters of support. Now, this evening, I want to share with you some thoughts about how limnology can drive environmental justice using a case study of Bodo, my experience, my personal experience. My, my presentation will have three components, the pre-spear era, during the spear, as well as the restoration component. Um, here is the geomorphic um, distribution of the Nigerian coastline. There are four geomorphic regions, and the coastline stretches 853 kilometers. You can see the accurate Niger Delta in the middle, which occupies more than 50% of the, of the coastline. Now, Bodo is situated um, very close to the extreme eastern margin of the Niger Delta. It is a coastal community. It sits on the Bodo Creek that has over 9,000 hectares of mangroves that provide livelihood support to the people of Bodo. Now, why, why did I become interested in studying Bodo Creek? I grew up, I, I, I'm from Bodo, so I grew up in Bodo. I, I had my primary and secondary school education in Bodo. And I used to accompany my friends to the creek of Bodo to pick the West African bloody cocoa, scenario scenarios, because Bodo Creek used to be a major hub of this cocoa. And we usually sell the cocoa to buy a school uniform and buy books. So when, when I was in the graduate school, precisely when I was doing my master's, I noticed that the cocoa population was declining tremendously. 
So I decided that I need to rescue the bloody cocoa. And then secondly, in the course of writing a report for an EIA study we did on the, the Imo River, I had the opportunity of go, going through a very classic report that was published by Nedeko 1961 on the Niger Delta about the waters of the Niger Delta. And I noticed that in that very big classic report, Bodo Creek was completely omitted. Despite the fact that Bodo Creek is relatively big and very productive. So I decided that it is time to you know, make um, Bodo Creek um, present in the, in the literature. So three eras of my, my work on Bodo. The first study I did was on the, and let me state that the Bodo Creek is divided into two sections, though they are interconnected, the Pado section and the Dormezo section. So in 2005, I worked on the water quality of the Pado section of Bodo Creek and published with my colleagues. Then. In 2003, there was a small spill that, happened, that occurred in a neighboring community and was carried in by tide into the Boulder Creek. The patch of oil deposited on a low-lying mangrove swamp in the creek and killed the mangroves within that swamp. So as at then, there was a common trend in the Niger Delta whereby oil degraded mangrove swamps we are left to nature, and the space keep happening. So I decided that it would be necessary to save the livelihoods of the local communities by teaching them how to restore mangroves themselves. So I contacted uh, Abba Venusa. Then he was the director of US EPA, because I saw in literature that he had done considerable work on remediation. So he was very kind to send me a box of literature and also guided me through the, re the remediation phase of the project until I planted mangroves. So it was a participatory intervention. So you can see me in the, in the photograph teaching the local people how to do it. And then you can see that on the other side of the, the picture that has, uh, the, that has uh, the signboard, the mangroves on the other side were intact, okay? So three years later, you know, I, I, I took this photograph of the mangroves um, and then, you know, not quite three weeks, there was a major OSP, which I'm going to talk about, the 2008 OSP that um, led to the, the, the justice struggle. So the, the spear killed all the mangroves that I planted with the community folks. So during my PhD, I, I got a, a grant from Paddy Foundation to study the population dynamics of the bloody cocoa and develop a low-tech method of culturing the cocoa so that we can, we can, reduce, white, uh, we can reduce pressure from, on the white stock and save the species. But then, my supervisor and I thought it wise that it would, it would be important to cover the, the entire uh, intertidal community of macrozobentos. So my study was expanded. Now, in terms of output, we were able to publish six journal articles that set the principal baseline of the Boulder Creek. I feel I should highlight two species that were part of the communities I worked on. Haminu Obiyana was formerly known from the Gulf of Biscay in Europe southwards to Kivet, but my study confirmed presence of the species in Nigeria and provided the first ecological data for the species in Africa and establishes a baseline for comparison with the European population. Then Cletistis rhizocus was first described by Graham Oliver from the Niger Delta. The, the bivalve is endemic in the Niger Delta, 
My study reports pioneer data on the population biology and energetics of the species because I also worked on the, the production and bi the biomass and production of the species. Now, four months after my doctoral sampling, I sampled for, for 24 months. So uh, four months after my doctoral sampling, a major spear hit the Boulder Creek. And that spear lingered on from August to November 2008. Immediately, I went into the creek, reported the immediate spill impact, and issued a, pre a, a, issued a report on the platform of the Center for Environment, Human Rights, and Development. Then I was the head of environment. Then in December that same year, another major oil spill happened on the same trans Niger pipeline and lingered until February 2009. So here is the report I issued, documenting the first spear. I didn't go back for the second spear because the creek was already um, swamped with oil. Then in July 2009, I mobilized my colleagues, and thanks to CODAID that funded the project, we conducted the first post-impact assessment um, study of the Bodo oil spears the 2008 and 2009 OSPs. So here is the photograph of um, intact mangrove that was the, the, that was the feature of my, my station one. So I took this photograph when I was collecting um, samples for over the 24 months that I, I studied the creek. And then during the post-impact assessment, you can see the level of damage to the same location. So I did other studies, uh, post, uh, post peace studies of the creek. I, we, we start with Scott Pegg here, we studied the impact of, uh, of the spears on livelihoods of the, the local population, impact of the spears on macro zubentos, because we had to resample my, my study site, impact on culture, how the, the, the white spears eroded the culture of the people of Bodo. I did that with Fentiman, and then we looked at the conflict between water and oil, oil exploration. Now, it is important to state that in the, develop, in the developing society where um, governance and institutions are weak, it, it will be important for limnologists to take their signs to the street to impact on policies and transforming the, the governance of, of the environment in those locations. So having realized that, I combined my science with advocacy and diplomacy. So when I took my data set to Groningen to meet with Professor Wim Wolf to, to analyze my data, I stopped over at Amnesty International office in Amsterdam and introduced this speech to them. That year, they were publishing a classic report titled Nigeria Petroleum Pollution and Poverty in the Niger Delta. So they used the border spill as the introduction of that big report. And then together we said, we published, together we said, Amnesty International published three other incisive reports on the border of spear. I talked about this piece in, in many international fora, including Chatham House, um, the UN in Geneva, as well as Dutch and German embassy. We also engaged media strategy, you know, because we are dealing with a giant. So we issued several press releases. We invited Sue Lloyd of the BBC, a blessed memory, to come and document this piece, and she, she did. In fact, it was, it was a reaction by the oil company to Suloy's documentary that in the email, they admitted liability for the first piece. Now, for two years, the, the border oil speakers had been in the local court, but 
no hope was in sight. So I decided to introduce this piece to Lide and Co. in the UK. Lide and Co. came and they were given power out attorney by the community and then the case started in, in the UK in 2011. Now, during the, the litigation, I provided many services to ensure that the community get justice. I provided logistical support to Lide on the ground, MAP 96 coastal shrines, provided spare support, controlled the complex community dynamics, and reviewed and fortified the community's expert reports. So after four years of intense legal battle in the UK court, in December 2014, the case was settled out of court. And 15,601 claimants in Bodo were paid 55 million pounds as compensation for their losses. The most attractive or, you know, for me, the most um, rewarding component of that, composition, of that compensation is the fact that 2,000 children got the compensation and the court you know, restricted their compensation to their education. So to date, the, the money they got from the spheres, the, the compensation is still funding their education. The, during the cleanup and restoration phase, in 2013, that's midway into the litigation, I took the Dutch ambassador and his deputy, the former Dutch ambassador to Nigeria and his deputy to the Boulder Creek and showed them the level of damage. So together with the ambassador and my colleagues in Nagon, in Emo Samyama and uh, Father o Obi, we set up the Boulder Mediation Initiative. The BMI is a multi-stakeholder platform facilitating the cleanup of the Boulder Creek. It comprises of Boulder community share, the regulators and civil society organizations. So it was, it, it was time to restore. So in 2015, we set up the, the SCAT team. And since then, I've been serving on the, the, the BMI Management Committee, the Shoreline Cleanup Assessment Technique SCAT team, and the Technical Working Group of the Cleanup. Currently, said, which is the organization I, I coordinate, is hosting the Secretariat of the BMI. So, Cleanup operation in the creek, which is ongoing. Um, so the, 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 the oil spills, not just those two oil spills. After those two oil spills, there were other, you know, sabotage spills in the creek. So 1,000 hectares of mangroves were, were destroyed in Bodo as a result of both, uh, both uh, oil spills and then reinforced by subsequent uh, oil spills. So, given the ecosystem goods and services of mangroves to the local population, we are now restoring mangroves in the Boulder Creek. And we are going to plant two million mangrove seedlings. So far, we've planted over 350,000 seedlings. We did, we continue to, my students and I continue to monitor water quality and biodiversity recovery of the Boulder Creek. With BMI colleagues, we calibrated SCAT and chemical sampling results and found out that SCAT, SCAT visual observation of contamination aligns more with chemical sampling in the subsurface, about 30, meter, 30 cm subsurface. With, with, my, with my BMI colleagues, we also assess PAH levels in some edible seafoods. We are continuing, we are monitoring the success of planted mangroves. We've developed community science framework for the Niger Delta because it is increasingly becoming very um, important that non-science citizens should be involved in environmental monitoring in the Niger Delta. We've also developed and published contextual manual for mangrove restoration in the Niger Delta. That manual is adopted by the, the BMI for the mangrove restoration of the Bulldog Creek. Immediate benefits of the Bulldog Cleanup. The Bulldog Cleanup is transforming cleanup methods in, 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 in Nigeria because 
now SCAT is being embedded in all cleanup. And it's making the local people participate in decision making relating to cleanup and, and restoration. Over 2,400 community youths have been employed since 2017 in Bordeaux. And these youths now have IMO 1 and 2 certificates and cleanup experience so they can work on other uh, cleanup endeavors in the Niger Delta. They reduce oil levels in the creek, gradual recovery of some species, particularly Perewinko, which is a major livelihood su uh, uh, support to the, to the women of Ogoni land. Then planted mangroves are showing good signs of success. Cleanup is becoming participatory, like I said earlier. Shell also donated 7 million social rehabilitation fund to the border community. Now, in 2007, we did some pilot to determine whether with the level of contamination, you know, despite the free phase oil remover, whether planted mangroves will, 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 will survive. And we, we planted some, some mangroves in, at different locations as pilot. So just last year, we went back to the creek and we saw that the mangroves were doing very well. So I, I want to acknowledge some, some persons. It's really been a lengthy journey so, uh, so far and the, the journey continues. Many thanks to my colleagues at the University of Port Harcourt and said, as well as my students, for the research cooperation. I'm grateful to Wolf, Dr. Oisins, Kopeg, who is seated here, Roy Lewis, Abba Venosa, Rudolf von Kose, Robert Molenbeek, Norman Duke, Lide, BMI, and, and share colleagues for the collaboration. I also want to acknowledge my vice chancellor my PhD supervisor, and the dean of my faculty. Then, above all, Patrick Nagbanton, self-founder and superhero, and Barbefe Bono, who was my dependable field companion, both of blessed memory, are smiling. May, may the dogged and excellent contributions of Patrick continue to inspire us. Thank you.